Welcome to the Mansky Caper. The gang's all here, and you've got a score to settle with Big Al Mansky. Let's get ready for the heist. First, let's build Al's mansion so we have something to ransack. Shuffle the room cards face down and place five of them in the middle of the table. Place an empty safe on top of each room. Then place the other room cards back in the box without looking at them. Put the getaway car near the mansion. Shuffle the gas cards into a deck next to the getaway car. This is the supply box. It holds all the coins, gems, and tokens you need while playing the game. Remove it from the game box and place it next to the mansion along with the Danger Danger die and the bag of loot tokens. Shuffle and deal a character card to each player. The players should each take the matching character pawn two plastic stands of the same color, an empty stash bag, and a call in a favor token. Put the character card and the pawn in the matching stands. Everyone puts their pawn on the getaway car. Time to get to know each other. Each player should read the white bordered side of their character card out loud to everyone and then place the character card so that the black bordered side faces the other players. The youngest player unlocks a room, followed by the oldest player. To unlock a room, select and turn over its room card, and then load its safe using tokens matching the guide under the nameplate. In this case, the great room gets three danger danger, four gasp, and nine loot tokens. The gold loot tokens should be pulled blindly from the loot bag. Close the safe, give it a shake, and place it in the room. The player who unlocked the room should move their pawn to that room. After the two rooms are unlocked, all the other players pick one of the two rooms to move to, beginning with the player to the left of the youngest player. Let the caper begin. In the Mansky caper, players take turns drawing one token at a time from the various booby-trapped safes throughout the mansion. You have to split loot you find with everyone in your room, so it can be very advantageous to be alone in your room when you find loot. Plus, you have to choose carefully when to take a turn to head back to the getaway car and stash your loot to keep it safe. When it's your turn, you have three choices. Open the safe in your current room, move to another unlocked room and open the safe there, or stash loot at the getaway car. To open a safe, shake it to mix the tokens inside, then reach in without looking and remove one token. You'll either find loot, a key, a surprising twist called a gasp, or an impending explosion called danger danger. If you draw a loot token, it'll show gems and or coins. Take that many from the supply and share them equally among all players in that room. Each player receiving loot puts it on top of their stash bag. Any leftover loot is placed on the room card. Gems are worth 5, and coins are worth 1. However, players never make change. Gems are shared equally, and coins are shared equally. Later, if a player leaves the room and you can now evenly split the leftover loot between the remaining players, go ahead and share it. If you draw a token showing a key, put it beside your stash bag. In a future turn, a key can be used to unlock a face-down room card and open its safe. Unused keys are worth three loot at the end of the game, and keys can never be destroyed in an explosion. If you draw a gasp token, reveal the top card of the gasp deck. Add and share any loot shown on the top of the card, and then read aloud the text below and follow its instructions. Once resolved, loot and gasp tokens should be placed on the room card where they are drawn. Keys should be left on the room card that they opened. This allows players to estimate what is left in a safe. If the token you draw is a danger danger, you place it on the leftmost open space on the room card's danger track, and then roll the danger danger die in an attempt to avoid disaster. A thumbs up means you disarmed the bomb and all is well. A hand symbol means you blew up, but don't worry, you're still in the game. Your pawn is moved to the getaway car to recover, and any loot on your bag is returned to the supply. You'll start your next turn from the getaway car. A jewel symbol means the loot of everyone in your room blew up. Any loose loot in the room, whether on a stash bag or on the room card, is returned to the supply. Players stay in the room. 
An explosion symbol means the room is destroyed. All players in your room return to the getaway car. All loot on bags and in the room is returned to the supply. Any tokens in the safe or on the card are returned to the supply. And the safe and room card are removed from the game. Keys are not affected. Players will begin their next turn from the getaway car. Lastly, this symbol is the worst news possible. Big Boss Al Mansky shows up. All players stay hidden in their current rooms, but all loose gems and coins in every room and all gems and coins on top of every player's bag are returned to the supply. Keys are not affected. Al then leaves and the game continues. As the game goes on, each room's danger track will fill up from left to right. If a Danger Danger token is placed on this symbol, the room is automatically destroyed. The Danger Danger die is not rolled, and nothing the players can do will prevent the destruction. On your turn, instead of opening a safe, a player can return to the getaway car. In that case, you bank all the gems and coins you pilfered by placing them into your stash bag, where they are safe from explosions. These are the basic rules of the game but these rules can be changed with the use of a call and a favor marker. Each character has a special ability, but you can never use your own special ability. Instead, one player may give a favor marker to another player to use that player's special ability. For instance, if I drew a Danger Danger token and gave Georgie the Nose a favor marker, I would get to roll the Danger Danger die twice and pick which result happened. It's important to note that only one favor may be used during each player's turn. Favor markers are critical to winning the game, so if you don't have one, make sure to offer the use of your ability to other players when the opportunity arises. Favor tokens have one other very important use. If I am at the getaway car with another player at the start of my turn, or if I move to the getaway car when another player is there, I can use a favor marker to say, Hey buddy! Aren't we supposed to share? That forces those two players to empty their stash bags and evenly split all the loot present. Keys are not divided up and any odd coin or gem goes to the player who was forced to share. This ability is so powerful that the favor marker is then removed from the game. It goes without saying that you should be confident the other player has more than you before making this move. However, players may never look into their stash bags and may not touch others' stash bags. Here's a hot tip. Favors, keys, and certain gas cards can be traded or sold. Players may negotiate freely for these at any time. However, they may not use anything inside their loot bags for such deals. Only visible loot, keys, cards, and favor markers are available for trading. Players may not pass their turns. A player at the getaway car must either play the Hey Buddy rule or move to an unlocked room and open its safe. The game ends when the last room is destroyed or if everyone is at the getaway car together and they unanimously agree to end the game. At that point, all players empty their stash bags and add up their riches. Coins are worth one, gems are worth five, and unused keys are worth three. The player with the most loot is the winner. In case of a tie, the player with the most gems wins. If still tied, the player with the fewest favor markers wins. Further details, as well as special rules for a two-player game, are covered in this comic book, which doubles as the rule book.